Welcome to East Texas Explorer. I'm Tori Bean. And I'm Gracie Gastonajad. On this week's East Texas Explorer, we'll be examining the issues of online harassment and depression. We'll also be taking a look at diversity here at SFA and what the university is doing to encourage tolerance and understanding. We'll be covering all of this and much, much more. East Texas Explorer starts now. SFA and Sam Houston have been playing football against each other for 89 consecutive years. Stay tuned to hear how last Saturday's matchup at NRG Stadium ended and what we have to look forward to for the rest of the season. The stadium was painted purple and orange this Saturday as fans cheered on these two teams for the 89th consecutive year, making this the third longest rivalry in Texas football. Sam Houston's running back Keyshawn Hill managed a 59-yard scoring rush that gave the Bearcats a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. With only two minutes left in the first half, SFA even the score making it 14-14. But moments later, Sam Houston responded with a drive by Hill with only 26 seconds remaining to give the Bearcats a 21-14 halftime lead. Starting off the second half of the game, the Bearcats' Keyshawn Hill once again scored on only the third play. The Lumberjacks were able to battle back, but despite efforts from players like Gus Johnson, who ran for 148 yards and a touchdown on 24 carries, SFA fell short. We sat down with senior fullback number 49, Chase Curry, to hear his thoughts on the game and how the Lumberjacks are preparing for this Saturday's matchup against McNeese. Well, the Pawnee West game is, is a big one for us, and it was a tough loss to have. But, uh, you know, we had a good plan, and we just kind of got a little starstruck out there. we, we got to pick ourselves up and keep playing. You know, it's not, it's not about getting knocked down. It's about getting back up for us, really. And we believe we're the best in the conference, and we just need to step up and show it. The Stephen F. Austin football team will take on McNeese State on November 8th. This is Hunter Sowards reporting for East Texas Explorer. Solving crimes is an everyday job for our very own Nacogdoches Police Department. But did you know that you can help to solve these crimes too? We have Mariella covering our Nacogdoches Crime Stoppers. The Nacogdoches Police Department's main concern is to keep the town and citizens safe. They always get the job done, but having an upper hand by the local citizens, they can always solve crimes. Nacogdoches Crime Stoppers began in 1982 and has been operating constantly since then. Crime Stoppers gives the citizens of Nacogdoches who don't want to get involved or are afraid to get involved to give information on crimes they know. I sat down with Sergeant Greg Sowell, coordinator of the Nacogdoches Crime Stoppers, explaining how one can call in without giving away their identity. People can call in the Crime Stoppers and never talk to a police officer. Uh, we have, there's no tricks, we, we have no caller IDs, we have no, our, our phones are actually answered by a third party. If a tip is led to an arrest, the citizen receives a cash reward. But how do they receive it if they don't reveal their identity? We have a system worked out with a local financial institution where the person actually calls and gets a code number and that person is given instructions on where to go to pick up their cash reward. If a citizen knows of a crime, they can call to leave their tip to 936 560 info or text NCS tips with their tip to crimes. For more information on Nacogdoches Crime Stoppers, visit their website at ncstips.com. This is Mariella Gonzalez with East Texas Explorer. 
Runners are preparing for the East Texas Half Marathon this season, including one devoted senior, Robert Key. Reporter Belen Casillas with more. Since early August, Robert Key has been training for the East Texas Half Marathon. On Saturday, November the 15th, he'll be running a total of 13.1 miles. In Lumberjack perspective, that is 53 times around the home Bryce Stadium track. Although Key has completed three half marathons in the past, this one is different. As Key began to prepare for his senior year, the fall of 2013, he was faced with life-changing health challenges. Doctors told Key he was at risk of becoming a diabetic. But after climbing 9,700 feet above sea level in Cooper Mountain, Colorado this past summer, Key has become determined to alter his fate. Running outdoors and indoors day or night, Key keeps his eyes on the prize. Adding a mile per week, he progresses towards the 13-mile goal. So I, I've basically built up from that point, and now in my training, I'm actually at 12 miles, and of course, the grand finale is going to be during the actual half marathon. With graduation right around the corner, Key balances his time between classwork, managing the Pine Log, SFA's newspaper, and making time to run each day. Whenever you have days that are just extremely tough on you, you don't want to go out and do it, just remember something in your life that was tougher that you did before because trust me when you think about that and you're doing your run you're gonna be like this is nothing I, I can get this ending his run with a good stretch key like many other runners anticipates a great achievement toward the finish line at the East Texas half marathon this is Belen Casillas with East Texas Explorer the internet is a great place to voice your ideas and opinions however should there be a limit to our freedom of expression online Kristen Edwards reports Hashtag Gamergate is a tag trending on Twitter after a revolt about video game journalism transformed into an online harassment campaign. While some might brush this off as just another internet brawl, Gamergate might reveal a bigger underlying problem about online harassment. As said by the Pew Research Institute, 73% of adult internet users have experienced some variety of online harassment, which includes threats of violence, stalking, and offensive names, implying that harassment is just another part of the internet experience. However, in the Gamergate controversy, the harassment was so disturbing, some users had to flee their homes, which makes some wonder if there is a line between freedom of expression online and freedom from harassment. Dr. Elizabeth Spradley, assistant professor of communication studies at SFA, thinks the problem of harassment online is due to users abusing the privilege of building an alternate self online. The idea that there's not um, face-to-face -face mitigation of how the other person responds and provides them immediate feedback. It's delayed oftentimes online, so they type something and then they have to wait for someone to type it back. The delayed feedback gives that person this kind of feeling of protection that they can just go ahead and get it out there and say it, and they're not necessarily thinking about how the other person might interpret it or react to it immediately. Although websites are not responsible for the content users post, using electronic communication as a tool to cause harassment, according to Chapter 42 of the Texas Penal Code, is considered a Class B misdemeanor. So when victims of online harassment are told to just ignore it, it's confusing because the same behavior in reality is unacceptable and would not be ignored. Spradley also adds that the unknown ownership of space on the internet is also a big contributor to online harassment. By and large, people are treating online space differently than they treat physical space. And when it comes to virtual spaces, I think by and large, people aren't sure you know, how to handle it. As the internet increases importance in the human experience, we as a society need to make sure our online experiences are safe ones. I'm Kristen Edwards reporting. When we return, we've got a whole segment on the issue of diversity at SFA and what various clubs and organizations on campus are doing to encourage racial tolerance. We've also got a report examining the controversy surrounding the potential of a KKK rally here in Nacogdoches. Stay locked in. East Texas Explorer will be right back. Welcome back to East Texas Explorer. Diversity is increasing within the Nacogdoches community and SFA's campus. Brandy has more on the story coming up next. Diversity is the state of having people who are of different races, cultures, and backgrounds in a group. So is SFA and Nacogdoches really diverse? Nacogdoches is actually diverse. And it's interesting because people don't realize it. 
there are a lot of different groups here in Nacogdoches, um, different pockets, um, different programs and events that happen in Nacogdoches that are diversity related. According to the 2013 census, Nacogdoches is 77.4% Caucasian. However, persons of African American and Hispanic descent has increased to both 20%. Persons of other descent, such as Asian and Pacific Islander, have increased by 5%. SFA statistics show that Caucasian is also the biggest ethnicity group, making up 58.7% of the student body. Nevertheless, Hispanic and African Americans are helped closing the gaps in higher education by increasing SFA's participation by 105% since 2003. SFA and Nacogdoches seem to be diverse. However, it used to not always be that way. Nacogdoches is the oldest town in Texas and was named for the Caddo family of Indians that lived here for many centuries. Nacogdoches remained a Caddo Indian settlement until 1803 when the Anglo-Americans gained control of their land and East Texas altogether. Likewise, it wasn't until 1964 that SFA was first integrated when Willie Jean Whitaker, a preacher, was the first African American to earn his degree at SFA. Though it may seem that we have diversity down, some still believe that there is room for improvement. Statistically speaking, Nacogdoches and SFA itself are not uh, diverse communities. However, um, I, I wish and I hope and I pray and I dream of the new Nacogdoches. For more information on events and programs on diversity, go to visitnacogdoches.org. Be on the lookout for Diversity Week and the Diversity Conference next semester, put on by the Office of Multicultural Affairs. I'm Brady Strand, and this is East Texas Explorer. The Organization of Multicultural Affairs displayed Tunnel of Oppression Tour this week. Here's Grayson with more. This week, the Organization of Multicultural Affairs put on the Tunnel of Oppression. I got to experience it firsthand. The Tunnel of Oppression is an interactive museum which spotlights different types of oppression through interactive theater, and multimedia presentations. We were able to sit down with a student from SFA who's also a member of OMA to get her input on what the Tunnel of Oppression means to her. With the Tunnel of Oppression, it's an interactive museum that shows students different areas of the world that they're not used to that is oppressed and just to make them aware of different cultures. And for me, I was a tour guide and what I did was I led students through that mu interactive museum and like I got I introduced them to different areas of stereotyping, bullying, and they got to see what it's like and how to prevent it from happening. Tony, I'm doing it now. The tour consisted of classrooms portraying different types of oppression such as stereotypes, bullying, LGBT, racial discrimination, and even religion. After the tour, students were gathered in a classroom with counselors to discuss and debrief what they experienced in the Tunnel of Oppression. If you'd like to get involved or receive more information, you can contact the OMA at 936-468-1073. For East Texas Explorer, this is Grayson Poyer signing off. The Ku Klux Klan held a rally in Nacogdoches this weekend, but how did the SFA students react? Rob Shelton has more. Racism has been a prevalent problem in America since its foundation in 1776. And while the tensions between American ethnicities has greatly decreased, the problem of racism still exists in the U.S. today. The Ku Klux Klan, founded in 1866 in Tennessee, is a cornerstone of racial tension in the U.S. While they do not often meet in Texas, the Klan posted the, this bulletin on their website in October for a rally in Nacogdoches in November. And this clip of the 1920s Klan rally shows some of the traditions it wrapped of itself in the sacred cloth of Christianity. Josh Moore, an SFA student, thinks that the rally coming to NAC will make most residents feel uneasy. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to make everything, everybody uncomfortable, definitely. With I mean, it's I don't, I don't think it's a good thing, for sure. Taylor Anderson, a student at SFA, feels as though the rally is unethical, but not illegal. They have the, the right to believe what they want to believe and the uh, the right the, the 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 right to speech and whatever you know to protest I don't know you know <laughs> all those amendments but um, I mean everybody knows what they stand for and everything so 
And while the sheriff's department was unable for an interview, they stated that there are contingencies in place if the rally does come to Nacogdoches. For East Texas Explorer, I'm Rob Shelton. After the break, we'll be back with information about the identifying and dealing with sleep deprivation and depression. We'll also talk about what one fast food company is doing to bring drive through into the 21st century. East Texas Explorer will be right back. Welcome back to East Texas Explorer. Depression is an issue that can be overlooked, but it has recently become a hot topic in the news. Stephen Bruins reports more on this subject. It's okay to feel down sometimes, but if those thoughts linger for more than a couple days, then you might be suffering from depression. Depression is a diagnosable disorder that is recognized by the DSM, which is a diagnostic manual for mental health professionals. Most research suggests that depression is both environmental, in the sense of what happens to us, as well as genetic, meaning it's passed on from generation to generation. Depression is labeled as a mood disorder. This means that when most people's mood would be given within a certain range, someone who suffers from depression would be below that. Depression can affect you no matter what age you are. Veteran counselor Jeff Schultz described who all can suffer from this disorder. Um, depression actually can affect anyone at any time in their lifespan. Um, there's actually small children who suffer from depression all the way through the lifespan to elderly, elderly people. Schultz continued by saying some people have what is called a single episode of depression, where they only have one episode and not have another, while other people may have multiple episodes of depression. So it can be a disorder that can strike anyone at any given time. There are multiple different treatments for people who suffer from depression, but the most common one today in counseling is called cognitive behavioral therapy. This means if you can change negative thinking patterns, that in turn will affect your feelings and behavior. The other common treatment for this disorder is medication through the use of antidepressants prescribed by a physician. Also, there are many great outlets for you to go to in case you need somebody who is more than willing to listen to you. The third floor of the Rusk Building has a counseling department that is a resource for any student on campus and is free of charge. The health department on campus is also available in case you need to seek out medical treatment. The sessions are offered every day, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 5. They also offer workshops that help you cope with depression or anxiety. For East Texas Explorer, I'm Stephen Brent. The day-to-day -day busy schedule can make it hard to get more sleep, but how about making those hours count for more? Here's Jonathan Roche with more. Sleep deprivation is a real issue according to the CDC, and the obvious solution, getting more sleep, can be hard to follow. Sleep deprivation is a clinical term used when you're not getting enough sleep each night. This can lead to forgetfulness, irritable behavior, lower immune system, body weight problems, hypertension, a higher mortality rate, and falling asleep unintentionally throughout the day. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration conservatively estimates that 100,000 police reported crashes are the direct result of driver fatigue each year. This results in an estimated 1,550 deaths, 71,000 injuries, and $12.5 billion in monetary losses each year. The National Institute of Health suggests that school-aged children need at least 10 hours of sleep daily, teens need 9 to 10 hours, and adults need 7 to 8 hours. I spoke with Dr. Penny Jeffrey, Director of Health Services at Stephen F. Austin State University about how you can make the hours count for more. Um, you really have to try to be fairly consistent on the amount of sleep you get each night. Um, try not to make it different by more than two hours each night to try to keep your circadian rhythm going well so you can sleep well the next night. Other suggestions were to avoid stimulants within two or three hours before you head to bed. This includes physical stimulants such as large meals, caffeine, and nicotine, as well as mental stimulants such as television and video games. This is Jonathan Roosh reporting with East Texas Explorer. Taco Bell rolled out its biggest idea yet. Will this new plan put them ahead of other fast food restaurants? Reporter Delaney Bentley asked the assistant manager in Nacogdoches what they thought.
The future of fast food is here, and it has a nice ring to it. This week, Taco Bell became the first national food chain to launch a mobile app that allows customers to order food, pay on their phone, and then pick up their order through the drive-thru. The new app is the first of its kind, and it allows users to use any of the Taco Bell ingredients to customize their order. After selecting from the menu, users choose a location to pick up their food. Upon arriving at Taco Bell, a notification will pop up and ask the customer if they would like to dine in or pick up their food in the drive-thru. Here you are. Thank you. I feel like it'll create less uh, communication errors because the customer sees what they want through the app and they can select exactly what they want and it will be the less disconnect between, you know, the headset and the speaker. Sometimes it's hard to hear. Sometimes you don't exactly understand what they mean. They don't know what they want, stuff like that. These new ideas are mostly aimed at the millennials, people who don't want to wait for food or wait to be seated. Surprisingly, it's not just a young generation interested in this new technology. According to a study by the National Restaurant Association, 56% of consumers ages 54 to 64 have used websites, apps, or other forms of media options for their restaurant experience. Four out of ten ordered food or looked at menus online, via tablet, or on their smartphone. Brian Nicole, the president of Taco Bell, says that technology has fundamentally changed the way people interact with brands. Consumers look for an experience where they can customize their order. To encourage customers to use their phones to order, Taco Bell is adding new menu items that are only available through the mobile app. From Nacogdoches, Texas, this is Delaney Bentley with East Texas Explorer. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next time with, with more stories from SFA and around Nacogdoches. Until then, you can find more East Texas Explorer and other Jack TV shows on our YouTube channel at Jack TV SFA. Check out our programs, learn more about Jack TV, and leave your feedback. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time for another episode of East Texas Explorer.